In this video, I show you the highlights of a recent pottery workshop which I taught and the two firings that we did there. This took place at an ancient ruin that I own out in the middle of the desert near the base of the Chiricahua Mountains. So come along with me this week as I make pottery, fire it, and explore the ancient ruins. Today I'm out here at my fall pottery workshop in which I have only one student this year. But anyways, uh, this is kind of a practice firing that I'm doing on the third day of the workshop just to kind of go over the principles of firing. And this is a, a test cup that I made a while back. So I'm going to do a little test firing here using this piece and we'll see if these come out and which makes the best black paint. So here's how my tumbler came out. Uh, all the paints fired a pretty decent black, as you can see here. So uh, the top was painted um, Rocky Mountain Bee Plant and Clammy Weed when the pot was still damp. So Rocky Mountain Bee Plant, Clammy Weed. And then the bottom, the other direction, Rocky Mountain Bee Plant, Clammy Weed when the pot was dry. And then this is Yucca Fruit and mesquite bean. So all pretty decent. That bottom Rocky Mountain bee plant down here uh, is a little bit gray, but um, there's a lot of salt in this clay and it, some of it's coming through on the pot and I'm not entirely sure that isn't salt that's coming through. It seems to be stronger at the bottom, so um, it could be that. Honestly, the clammy weed and the mesquite bean are probably my darkest blacks on this. So. Um, and you saw the firing, that was pretty small sticks. They were mostly, you know, like thumb thickness. There were some maybe about like that, but uh, not super big material. Pretty brief firing, uh, but my thermocouple said I got at least 700 degrees Celsius. We oxidized good. We can see kind of a blush on the bottom there. Um, I actually touched this yesterday. We had a windstorm come up and I had to move some stuff quickly and I grabbed it with clay hands. So I've got, I got orange fingerprints on it. But that also shows you that we got oxidation. We actually turned that clay kind of orange. So um, I think we got plenty hot enough. And just to prove that we got hot enough, uh, I will drink out of it. Because nothing proves that you've made ceramics like the water test, right? Mmm. And there is nothing more refreshing than drinking out of a ceramic earthenware vessel. There's a taste and a smell that you cannot get any other way. We're getting better at this low temperature uh, oxidized organic paint firings and look forward to doing some more soon. I got another pot here today that I'm going to paint and hopefully fire on Sunday. Now we're expecting wind on Sunday so we'll see how that turns out. If it's windy I'm not going to be able to fire. So I'm out here at my ruin. Uh, there's a bunch of these uh, stone circles like this. If you see this uh, foundation I'm sitting by, it's maybe a circle, six feet circle across. Um, and you know, really don't know what they were for. Down in Chihuahua, they find granaries. So it could be a granary like that, uh, but really don't know. Nobody's ever excavated out here. But there's at least four of these circles similar to this here on this site. I'll show you some other things. There's some um, pottery sherds you can find and a lot of like wall alignments, you know, foundation stones where there were houses out here. But this, these are kind of a mystery, these circles that we have out here. Now I'm out here on one of the highest mounds at this ruin. 
Now these mounds weren't built to be mounds. These are actually old adobe houses, Pueblo homes, that have just, the adobes have melted and left a big mound of earth. So there's a number of these out here. And this is one of the higher ones. So sometimes when the, when the house was in an area where it eroded and it was low, you'll see the foundation stones. And other times where it didn't erode so much, like on this one, we just have a lot of that earth that was the adobe walls in place, then you can't find the foundation stones. But you can still tell where the houses were based on uh, the shape of this ground. And these mounds would be kind of long because they were room blocks that sometimes would go, you know, four, five, six rooms long. So that's a lot of what we see out here, just these artificial kind of mounds. Like this would have been relatively flat ground before the Native Americans built these homes out here. And then over the course of 600 years, the adobes just melted down to just mounds of earth. We find a lot of uh, artifacts in here too. And there's a lot of rodent activity. So rodents dig down in the ground, they bring up artifacts, uh, bits of pottery shirt and uh, shell, all kinds of things. And then other things, larger animals like coyotes or foxes or badgers will dig down in those rodent burrows and bring back more stuff. So just walking around looking at the recent animal activity is a good way to find uh, artifacts that have been brought up recently. So sometimes you come out here and you find these little bits of shirt, you turn them over, just like that one, they're decorated. That's Salata polychrome right there. So there's a lot of Salata polychrome found out here, but studies have shown that most of this was actually being imported from the Gila River, a long ways away. Here's a little pile. The rodents brought this up a while back and I kind of stuck these sherds up under this bush to keep them from getting stepped on by the cows. I'm in the process of fencing the cows out. That's going to be a big job. And that'll help protect the site from getting demolished. There's a little shell, they call that a tinkler, and that is uh, attached to a garment. So you'd run a piece of string through it and tie it off. You'd have a whole bunch of those maybe at the bottom, kind of tinkling like bells. So this is a great example of seeing some of the rock alignments that are foundations to these adobe rooms. I think somebody must have come out here and dug this room because it, there's kind of a depression here. There wouldn't be a depression where these rooms are because as those adobe walls came down, it would, like I talked about, create a mound. But this one has a depression and you can make out the rocks here, all the way along this side, and then down the back side, and then there's another corner here, and you can see the rock is going down up into this bush here. So it's a good, place where you can kind of see the size of a room and get an idea for uh, kind of how they were built. So these rocks would be set into mud. They'd dig a trench, they'd set these rocks into mud, and then they would lay up adobe walls on top of that. So these would be the foundation. So usually where you see these stones, the floor is nearby. It's either just below or just above or right at in that area. Okay, here's a look at some of the pottery we've made and the tools we've used this week. Uh, these are from my student, Ken. Here's some of the um, hematite that we found yesterday and some ore tailing piles. Here's one of my little slate pallets with some manganese paint on it. This is a little bowl that I made from the local clay around here and tempered with the local sand and just we're going to fire it and see how it comes out. And then here's some organic paint. This is mesquite bean and Rocky Mountain bee plant. Here's my white slip from up in northern Arizona. Here's Ken's mug. Here's some of my manganese paint I have mixed up. It's actually manganese and copper and clay mixed together. That's just dry, you just add water to it. Here's Ken's jar. And here's some um, 
Here's some yucca brushes that I have soaking. So you have to soak these brushes for a while to soften up the bristles. So I just leave them soaking in water until they're ready. Here's another little slate palette with some black paint on it. And here's the jar that I made uh, yesterday morning. So I still need to polish that and paint it in time to fire. And we'll be firing on Sunday. A little look at what we've been up to this week and hoping for a good successful firing in a couple of days. Here we are out here in the middle of nowhere. Okay, it's Saturday afternoon. We're getting ready to fire the pottery we produced for this workshop. We'd usually be doing this on Sunday morning, except there's a lot of wind forecast for tomorrow, so we're trying to get it done tonight. So let me show you what we got here. A pile of firewood. Here's where we're gonna fire. There's Mott's. Here's the pottery that Mott's brought. Here's Ken's pottery. Really nice. And uh, the one I produced, I'm not gonna be firing because I didn't finish painting it. That, that burrow brush is amazing stuff. It just burns. Moment of truth. About to start popping. Will your pottery come out or won't it? <laughs> your pops, they're gonna pop? Yeah, they probably be popping right about now. 99% of that breakage is from not getting all the moisture out. Got it. Especially if you have a bunch of like designs that you don't want fire clouds on, Got you it. know? Yeah. And you can put cover shirts all around there. Now, have and you seen Tony Soares? No, I don't think so. Check him out too, because he's got some cool outdoor firing ones where he fires with like charcoal briquettes. What a trip. Whoa. My way, so. And then when you first see your pottery after the firing, yeah. you have the reds all look like chocolate brown. Yeah. And they will actually, that iron's gonna oxidize after we pull it out and it'll actually turn red while you're watching it cool. Mm -hmm. I was never much into mineralogy. Uh, a lot, a lot of good. So the pottery workshop is all wrapped up. We finished firing all the pots last night. Everything came out good. I don't think we had a single thing break in that firing. It just got too dark to video. So I couldn't really show you taking the pots out of the fire. It wouldn't have looked like anything. So uh, my student got up early and left, so I can't show you the pots now either. But uh, it was successful. That wraps up my 2020 pottery workshops, which was kind of a bust thanks to the virus. So there's always 2021, we're hoping to, I'm gonna schedule some workshops for next year and hopefully we'll do better. We can do these outdoor workshops like this, I think pretty safely. And so I'll be looking at maybe scheduling some more of these in the spring. Uh, we're about coming up on cold weather now, so that's pretty much it for this year until maybe March. If you're enjoying the channel, think about subscribing so you know when the next video comes out. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.